Hello again, it is time for another question and answer video here. We get two questions for this video. First one is this. A friend of mine recently told me that she now believes that the sin of Sodom was not homosexuality, rather inhospitality. Can you please comment on this? Well, anytime there's a question about the Bible, the best thing to do is look at what the Bible actually says. So this is Genesis chapter 19. This is the actual account here of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, it'd be good if, if you're going to read this, look at chapter 18 also because that leads up to this. And just a quick uh, reminder of what's going on here. Uh, Abraham is visited by God. God comes to him in, in a bodily form along with two angels also in bodily form. Abraham pleads for Sodom and Gomorrah because God has said he's going to destroy them because of their wickedness. And, 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 and Abraham says, you know, if there are only 50 righteous people there, will you destroy it? And it goes to 40, goes to 30, goes to 20, goes to 10. Um, and that's why I, I guess uh, God sends those two, uh, two men that are angels to Lot, Abraham's nephew, in Sodom. Uh, the two guys are going to decide to stay outside in the night, but Lot sees them, and that's where this picks up. This is Genesis 19, uh, verse, verse 3. Lot insisted so strongly that they go with him and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men for they have come under the protection of my roof. By the way, that is just a, a horrible thing. Lot suggested um, something sinful to appease something sinful. Uh, verse 9, get out of our way, they replied. And they said, this fellow came here as an alien. Now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot and moved forward to break down the door. Of course, that didn't actually happen. You can read the rest here that the question is about what was the real sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? Was it, was it homosexuality or inhospitality? Well, let, let's first talk about homosexuality. Is homosexuality a sin? To answer that, I mean, there's tons of Bible verses we can look at, but the best is just simply go to the very beginning. Genesis chapter 1 and 2, when God created the world, the universe. He also created marriage and he created sex. Sex was a perfect part of God's perfect creation. Now, that perfection has been lost with the fall into sin. And so, like all of God's gifts, it has been corrupted. It, they're, they're, can use it correctly and use it not correctly. Um, so is homosexuality a sin? God created marriage, he created sex to be between one man and one woman, a husband and wife. So is homosexuality a sin? Yeah, because it's not according to God's plan. But there can also be uh, heterosexual sex that is a sin as well. Uh, if it is between a couple that's not married, uh, if it is a husband cheating on his wife, uh, any of those can be breaking God's gift, God's design for sex and marriage. But let's get back to Sodom and Gomorrah. Was their sin homosexuality or inhospitality? The short answer is really it's both. Um, look at Jude chapter 9. Jude is a really interesting book. It's the second to last book of the Bible. And it is so small, it's one chapter. So anytime you hear a reference, it's just the verse reference in the Bible. So Jude chapter, uh, chapter Jude verse 7 says this, uh, In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal life. Pretty clear what God says there. Um, look also way in the Old Testament, Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 16, uh, verse 49. And I think maybe this is the idea where in the inhospitality comes in, but uh, you got to take everything in context to read verse 49 and verse 50. Verse 49 says, Now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. Verse 50 
They were haughty and did detestable things before me. Therefore, I did away with them as you have seen. So there's multiple sins going on there, right? All of which comes out of a person's heart. Jesus, you know, the Bible says out of our heart comes the evil thoughts, the, the murder, the, the, the sexual immorality. All of that starts here. So was the, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah homosexuality or inhospitality, pride? Um, yes. It's not limited to one thing. Um, so so th this, this um, you know, kind of a long answer to your question, but uh, a, a real quick way to answer questions like this, you can do a Google search or, you know, sometimes Google may not give you all the Bible references you're looking for. I use a website called BibleGateway.com, free website. I have a, a Bible software on my computer, it's called Logos, but it's really expensive. It has the Greek, it has the Hebrew, all that stuff. For you, BibleGateway.com, just fine. And you just can type in, for instance, for this answer, type in the, the word Sodom in the search bar and you're gonna come up with, I think it's 47 passages in the Bible that reference Sodom. Read them all and you can see exactly what the Bible says the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was. It, not really limited to one, but multiple. Hope that answers the question. On to question number two. I have several friends and co-workers who are either on the fence about Christianity or not Christian at all. Can you please give me some practical everyday ideas to share Jesus' love with them beyond just be nice to them? Thank you. Well, I, I, I won't put down, just be nice to them. <laughs> That's a good thing and a great place to start. Jesus said, let your light shine uh, that others may see what you do. So, so definitely do that. Don't, don't stop that. Um, but also look for, for instances or opportunities, some big events maybe um, in, in the person's life that, that gives you special opportunities. And sometimes the big events can be a pretty um, serious negative hospital stay, something like that. It can be even big, uh, happy events. But those might be great opportunities for you to, to send a card, for you to, to send a note, to text, um, to go visit, to, to do any number of things, and gives you an opportunity to, to share your faith with more than just being nice to them. Um, another idea is uh, just saying everyday conversation. Bring up, um, bring up things that are going on at, here at church, at Trinity. It gives a, a great kind of a soft um, avenue to, to bring up your faith just by saying, hey, you know, this last weekend I did Faith in Action Day and boy, we did this and this and this. It was a lot of fun with a lot of people and it gives opportunity for you to share what we did, but also kind of bring in why. Um, Creek Country Christmas events, any of those uh, opportunities where we're doing something, just a great opportunity for, for everyday conversation. Um, also, it doesn't hurt to just simply invite someone to come to church. If they say no, they say no, but it's an opportunity. Um, if you're going to do that, of course, regular Sunday church services are, are great. But the big one in my mind would be that Good Friday Tenebrae service, that service of darkness, and then Easter Sunday. Th those two services are, th that is the, the heart of what we believe as Christians. So. Those would be the ones I would say, oh, that, that's your, your great opportunity. Um, then also, there, there's, um, depending on, on, you know, where exactly they're at, what questions they have or, or, or what, I, I would actually suggest talking about or, or sharing the book Case for Christ. It's by Lee Strobel, maybe you've heard me talk about him. He was a courtroom uh, reporter for, I think it was the Chicago Tribune for a number of years, was an avowed atheist, just absolutely anti-Christian. His wife became Christian. And so he did all this research in the Bible. He was gonna prove his wife wrong and in researching what the Bible is and what it says, he actually became a Christian. And he wrote this book, Case for Christ. Phenomenal book. If people like reading books, oh, that'd be a great one because it answers a lot of questions and comes from that angle of, I don't believe this. And then researching and seeing what actually is true. Um, there's a video that was produced kind of chronicling uh, Lee Strobel's path through this. There, there's a movie about it, about his life. Um, that, that's great, but, but the video I'm talking about really gets at his, his journey and the questions he had and the answers he found. I'll, I'll actually uh, have the, the, the link to the video here in, in just a second. Um, great one, 
great to watch Chris herself, but also to share um, some some great things there. But uh, you know, um, you just never know when those opportunities arise to 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 bring up your faith to share it. I, I will say this. Um, I, I'm, I'm reminded of the book of Esther in the Old Testament, and which is an amazing book too. Esther was told by her cousin, you know, maybe she was put at that time, for, for such a time as this was the phrase, to do things, to do the right thing at the right time. And maybe God's put you at this place in these people's lives for this very reason, for a time such as this. Um, I, I'm actually watching a sermon series by another Wells pastor, Pastor Mike Novotny up in Appleton, the core, and he's going through Esther, and it is an amazing sermon series. Check it out. Here's the link also for that. Um, might, might give you some, really, some, some, some food to, to chew on, some, some things to think about in that regard. Maybe God's put you there with these people for this time, or maybe that time's still coming. Either way is an opportunity to share your faith in any number of ways as, as, as those opportunities come up. So I hope that answers the, the two questions we have uh, for this video. Uh, next time, keep bringing the questions up and uh, have a blessed day.